It's good stuff. I can't help it. <laughs> it looks like everybody is a romantic. Okay, this was amazing. Yes. Great playing, everybody. Thank you so much. Wow. So? We go from the top to C, please. Oh, just a small patch. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have to do all that, actually. Ah, well, it's okay. All right. We better do it in... That's all. Wayne. Yes, we're ready. Okay. First time in my life I saw an orchestral score. I was fascinated. You know, it's not two lines, it's 35 lines, 40 lines. Well, the entire orchestra is, it's all there. I couldn't sleep at night because I, I was imagining myself conducting an orchestra. It's just playing music in my head and imagining the miracle, how great would it be. And then it happened, and it's still happening. So that's why I do it. It's amazing because it's a small town, it's 300,000 people, Wellington. So it has one main street. Within five minutes walk, I counted 18 coffee places. And they're all in business? Yeah, <laughs> of course. I, and I wasn't able to try them all, but I tried really hard. I think this was my, my best recording ever. Really? Yeah. Because yeah, that's how it felt. It it went so well. They played it well. It's it's really good music. You know, both Tchaikovsky and Mussorgsky. It's it's mm. plus it's it's it has potential to be quite popular because it's really mainstream stuff. It's not like the Anacheck that is uh, fringe. I'm aware of what to avoid. You know, okay. in in order not to not to be a, another copy of the same. Okay, so you know like what is really common, and then you stay away from that. Yeah. So okay. and uh, and Tchaikovsky, that's that's brand new. Nobody nobody did before. It's again it's the same concept as Janáček, so orchestral suites, uh, operas without singing. So you know, there are many people who who would like Tchaikovsky music, but. Uh, they don't like opera, they don't like the, the singing. It's a challenge to be uh, original and still add some decent quality, so that was... So how, do you, how do you approach that challenge? I just go and do my best. What I found with the museums of the orchestra is we often eat conductors for breakfast in a heartbeat. And if they're not, if the musicians aren't engaged, then they're gonna misbehave like a bunch of kids in class with a substitute teacher. But the arrangements have been really interesting musically. So Peter's 
captured our musical imagination. And so there's a lot of interesting playing going on and people paying attention and working hard. And he's an engaging personality on the podium. to transfer from the international terminal to the domestic in like 15 minutes because it was so tight, the connection. And it was tight, the connection, you know, we almost didn't make it, so I was pushing the cart with my huge suitcase and Sasha's suitcase like crazy, you know, because they, they have, they have uh, buses, but we didn't have time to wait for the bus, so I was... And, and you know, it was so many turns and twists and uh, every, every corner, and I always thought, we, we're there, no, we're not, we're there, we're not, we're not. But we made it! We made it because, because Kiwis are, as Australians, really laid back and, you know, uh, no worries, mate. No worries, mate. No worries. No, no worries. So were you stressed with John Wellington? There was no, there was no stress whatsoever. No. No. This orchestra, I think, it comes out in some really positive ways. This orchestra knows how to have fun. You know, we we laugh a lot together. Partly, I think that's because we're a touring orchestra and you get to know everybody really well, whether you like it or not. The players here, I think, are, really take a lot of pride in doing it right. So I think the reason that we're ahead of schedule is um, that, you know, the takes are going well because people aren't um, goofing off when it comes to doing the job right. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Hey! Hey! Two, two before P. Umoso. Seven in J. The producer who recorded it. Wayne. What? Wayne. 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 Uh, you know, he's, he's different. He's, he's very thorough and he's uh, a former musician and he reads the score. And he was extremely helpful and it's really very pleasant to work with him. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's different, but he's good. Yeah, we did three cities together and, and it looks like we both like to work with, with each other. I want it perfect no matter what. It's just another thing that not everybody can appreciate the difference. But somehow, you know, I think that if everybody tries to do it at his best, the energy comes through even for the people who couldn't tell the you know, difference between details, between technical details. But the energy will, will be so persuasive that Everybody got, uh, should get the same pleasure as we had. <laughs> Sounds like oxen. Yeah. <laughs> You learn to understand where the conductor's coming from pretty soon. Um, and then you can, the orchestras have a habit, I think, of sizing up in the conductor very soon after uh, 
um, you've started a piece of music and I guess the conductors have the same habit of while they size up those players in the orchestra that are um, interesting. What time is it? It's four. Four? Can be four. It's early. It is. We ended up so early. Why did you end so early? Because it was finished. <laughs> now that I hear it, I'm very happy. It's, it's all working out the way I wanted it, so. And better. Some stuff is even better than I thought. They played really well today. So, cerveza? Vámonos. have a great time with my parts. It, you know, it always has a really nice uh, sense of the English horn line. And, yeah, I'm, always, I'm always having a good time. Whenever, whenever he's, he comes around, it's, it's, it's fun to play his, his, uh, his uh, interpretations. They play. Tchaikovsky, I mean, it was just, a, I think it was a moving experience for us all. I could hear that the musicians around me. There were there were places where things were, were just just really clicking. You know, there was there was every take there was something happening. Uh, it's just a personal thing, you know. Uh, um, clearly, Peter really believes in this music, and he's got the skill to be able to bring the best out of it. And together, with us working together, we just did some beautiful things. You, you make you make your choices and based on experience and on all the previous work and things I know about instruments and and orchestras and myself and so it's all working together after so many years that um, I just I just do it like you know you you go and swim and you don't don't think about uh, oh I have to move my arm now you just swim. What's the tempo on that? Because I <laughs> and that's this is by Tchaikovsky. Yeah, no, no. I, I think yeah. As long as it doesn't rush, then it's yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I thought it's a little bit like yeah. weird, <laughs> although doing it mid support yeah. might be a problem. Yeah, well, that's why I thought. Come yeah. on, let's see. From forte, okay, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. No, that, that was the only. I, 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 I put it there because he wrote it, but I <laughs> The concertmaster is the first guy in first violins. You know, this is, first violins had all the melodies, all the important stuff, the most difficult stuff. So the best first violinist was all the, always the best man in the orchestra. Mm -hmm. So then, when there was no conductor, the first violinist was the guy who was actually conducting with his instrument, it was Stegeiger, standing violinist, was leading the band. And when it, it got too complicated, the orchestra got, got bigger and bigger, they needed an extra guy to put it together. So. You know, if you think about a composer who might 
write the symphony in a year. This guy, I don't know how long he has done this for, but we just last year we did all uh, the anthems for Rugby World Cup, which he had arranged, and now he is ready four new pieces, which are all massive. <laughs> and they are, again, they are arrangements by him, which means that he has to have, have, you know, he must have had a lot of effort and time put on that to just to think how it works and how it's, how it's going to sound. So it's, it's not just writing the music, but actually sort of creating it again. And I think that, I don't know, it must be, he must be a bit of a genius when it comes to that, because it, he must be very fast, firstly, but also very clever to keep it um, stylish and interesting. Um, it's incredible. I mean, that's what I mean. It's just, uh, yeah, a couple of months and you're able to do this. It's just, it's crazy. You know, these are these are really top musicians. So it's I, I don't know whether challenging, but they 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 found it inspiring. And most of them told me, "Oh, we had such a fun week. It was you know because it's, it's really good music, both Tchaikovsky and Mussorgsky. And and you know, uh, I wrote it the way that almost everybody got to." What, got to be featured and, and they had a lot of solo playing and they really enjoy that because they can be they can be creative and I and I and I let them and plus there is this immense pleasure of of the fact that the sound I created on paper is happening in reality and then you just bask in that you know, that's ha 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 You're playing these works that are, that are great for a reason and they've remained with us for a reason and, and they deserve to be played. So every time you're playing them you're kind of giving a fresh take on that historical thing and, and I think that that's really interesting. Uh, yeah. When you guys you want to do it now a little bit? Chicago of New Zealand. This is, you know, this is arranging. This is nothing personal. This is, this is not taking anything from the bottom of my soul. Well, I'm the sucker for good ideas. If you can find a conductor who finds this arrangement more, this orchestration more interesting than Ravel or any of the others, it will have a future. Issue will be how we can convince enough conductors to at least listen to it. I think once they listen, they will find something that is really far more effective than Ravel. But that's all that's played. There's more to the piece than there's in the Ravel. And Ravel is a master orchestrator. He used percussion um, sporadically, but back in the day probably it was quite a lot. But um, to us now it's just here and there, just in the right moment, just great. And what Peter's done is he's taken a lot of that out and put in a little bit more, <laughs> or sometimes a lot more, but um, has, has used us more than um, most people have. And that is because our technique in the percussion department our percussion world has evolved so much in the past years that we now can do a lot of stuff that maybe back in the day the percussionists couldn't. 
he's taken advantage of that, Peter, and really colorized things and used, made full use of the percussion. Peter, yes? it might be good to actually just play through the tune, you know, just the tune, because there are so many people on it. With an orchestra and with his love playing his orchestrations, they really work well. And uh, like today, the, the Mussorgsky, I think it, it's perfect for, for the music, for the material. Uh, he goes over top with uh, 15 extras in pictures and exhibition. And obviously somebody has to pay for those. He didn't think of that. Uh, no, but it's, I mean, it's really, I think he's one of the best in his profession. Mussorgsky's pictures at an exhibition. It's a, it's a like series of pictures. He, he watched at an exhibition and then he got inspired and he wrote music to each of the pictures. Like, and and they are between those pictures are is always the same piece called the Promenade. much better if I slow down the tempo. So I adjusted the tempo of the promenade to real promenade. Oh, very cool. Wow, how about that? That's pretty, uh, pretty insightful there, Papa. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so insightful. Remember musical genius? Yeah, yeah, yeah the musical disease, that's... I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Yeah, I want to have the CDs and just put them in a bask. A bask. I think classical music is really, first and last, all about life force. No, for me, classical music is just the thing, you know. Uh, there's, there's no finer thing than, than watching really good musicians play a great piece with a great conductor and you feel a real synergy on the stage and you know that that relationship goes back for hundreds of years i think there's no this is like the this is like uh the star wars empire you know or uh it's like the lord of the rings you know except this is real you know this is real music that's been around for a long long time and and people are still enjoying it and they will still enjoy it far into the future you know it doesn't get any better than that folks it's a, it's a week basically on autopilot because the music is given. I I've been through it so many times that it's it's sort of in, ingrained in me, and and I I just I just go through the through the moves, and 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 it's happening. And this time, you know, this time it, everything went better than I expected. It's a, the pure existence of the sound that it's happening. So you know, the sound is exceeds my expectation. I, I play it back when the session is over and I go, hmm, wow, they really play the shit out of that one.